know you've said in the past that you are doing for money what email did for communication. Do you think this is really going to take off to that extent? You know, we do. We, we, when we look at the world, uh, you see a world completely connected on an information web. And that's terrific. That makes things tremendously efficient. But what we don't have is the sense of a value web. Payments, the exchange of value is still pre-internet based on 40-year-old technology. And so that's very expensive. That really slows e-commerce. Lots of parts of the world don't have the ability to make payments. So this new technology that really is a second gen of Bitcoin enables now value to be exchanged in the same way that information is currently exchanged. And that's a big deal, we think. But do you think, Chris, that people are actually going to be comfortable using a kind of virtual currency? I should ask you, too, how is what you've produced on the coin side, on the digital currency side, different from what Bitcoin's already doing? So uh, what Bitcoin set out to do is really build a new currency. Uh, it, that had no central bank. So in a way, Bitcoin is sort of a way of storing value. Ripple is a, a completely different idea. We're using that s the same breakthrough technology, but we're using it to build a currency agnostic value exchange or value web. So you actually don't need to adopt a new virtual currency to use Ripple. You can use it with dollar, euro, yuan, real, uh, anything you like. We have a math-based currency built into Ripple that is like Bitcoin, but it really functions as an enabler. So we think most people will use Ripple using their existing things of value, like dollars or euro or yen. So to what extent, Chris, are you seeing pushback? I know one of the companies that you risk taking market share from is a company such as Western Union. I mean, this is a pretty regulated space. To what extent are you facing headwinds like that? So you're absolutely right. I mean, you know, law enforcement regulators are right to be concerned about any new technology. But we worked a lot with law enforcement. We were just in D.C. Uh, this week, for example. We work with Promontory Financial. So uh, we think that regulators will, if, if you can express the potential of these to really help business and commerce, and at the same time show that they're actually more transparent systems for catching the bad guys and eliminating bad things that can happen with financial systems, we think that's a win-win. And we think that that is the case with these new exciting technologies. Now, I know you've done some successful fundraising. Andreessen Horowitz is just one of your more famous backers. What are you doing with the money? Yeah, so we're using the money for Ripple Labs to really uh, build an a, uh, incredible team of software developers, cryptographers, security experts, and business development folks that can bring on banks and remittance companies and really mainstream uh, financial companies. But it's important to note, so we're about 28 people now in San Francisco and growing rapidly. Important to note, though, that Ripple Labs is really the uh, company that is building the software and developing it. Ripple Protocol is a completely open source system. It's a public good. Anybody can use that. We don't control it. We don't own it. So it's kind of two different roles, kind of like a Red Hat to Linux uh, is a good analogy for Ripple Labs. Ripple. Chris, before we let you go, some people have critiqued the lack of friendliness or the lack of ease in using the site. Is that something that, A, you agree with, and B, if so, that you're seeking to remedy? Yeah, yeah, so we've been focusing to date on really building the network, building the fundamental uh, architecture to make it easier for other developers to build on top of Ripple. Ripple is really like the pipes and the, the foundation. Um, at the same time now, we are also bringing on product people to make uh, consumer direct products easier to use. So we're really working on both of those as an SDK for developers as well as a direct-to-consumer uh, application, uh, application.